The Troubles of Matthew Mahoney by William McGonagall. Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Yearsley. In a little town in Devonshire, in the mellow September moonlight, a gentleman passing along a street saw a pitiful sight a man bending over the form of a woman on the pavement. He was uttering plaintive words and seemingly discontent. "'What's the matter with the woman?' asked the gentleman, as the poor fallen woman he did narrowly scan. "'There's something the matter, as your honour can see, but it's not right to prate about my wife. Blame me.' "'Is that really your wife?' said the gentleman. "'Yes, sir, but she looks very pale and wan.' "'But surely she is much younger than you?' "'Only fourteen years, sir, that is through. "'It's myself that looks a deal older, nor really I am. "'Trouble have whitened my hair, my good gentleman, "'which was once as black as the wings of a crow, "'and it's throuble as is dyed it as white as the snow. "'Come, my dear soul, Bridget, it's past nine o'clock, "'and to see as lying there, it gives my heart a shock.' and he smoothed away the raven hair from her forehead, and her hands hung heavily as if she had been dead. The gentleman saw what was the matter, and he sighed again, and he said, "'It's a great trial, and must give you pain, but I see you are willing to help her all you can.' But the encouraging words was not lost upon the Irishman. "'Trial,' he echoed, "'don't mention it, Your Honour, but the blessings of God rest upon her. Poor creature!' She's good bar in this one fault, and by any one I don't like to hear her miscalled. What was the reason of her taking to drink? Bless your honour, that's just what I often times think. Some things is done without any reason at all, and sure this one to me is a great downfall. Ah, Bridget, my darling, I never dreamt you'd come to this. And stooping down, her cheek he did kiss while a glittering tear flashed in the moonlight to the ground, for the poor husband's grief was really profound. "'Have you any children?' asked the gentleman. "'No, Your Honour, bless the Lord, contented I am. I wouldn't have the lambs know any harm of their mother. Besides, sir, to me they would be a great bother. "'What is your trade, my good man?' "'Gardening, sir, and mighty fond of it I am. Kind sir, I am out of a job, and I am dying with sorrow.' "'Well, you can call at my house by ten o'clock to-morrow, "'and I'll see what I can do for you. "'Now hasten home with your wife, and I bid you adieu. "'But stay, my good man, I did not ask your name.' "'My name is Matthew Mahoney, after Father Matthew of great fame.' "'Then Mahoney stooped and lifted Bridget tenderly, "'and carried her home in his arms cheerfully, "'and put her to bed while he felt quite content.' still hoping Bridget would see the folly of drinking, and repent. And at ten o'clock next morning, Matthew was at Blandford Hall, and politely for Mr. Gillespie he did call. But he was told Mrs. Gillespie he would see, and was invited into the parlour, cheerfully. And when Mrs. Gillespie entered the room, she said, "'Matthew Mahoney, I suppose you want to know your doom. Well, Matthew, tell your wife to call here to-morrow.' I'll ask her, my lady, for my heart's full of sorrow. So Matthew got his wife to make her appearance at Blandford Hall, and trembling upon Mrs. Gillespie, poor Bridget did call, and had a pleasant interview with Mrs. Gillespie, and was told she was wanted for a new lodgekeeper immediately. But Bridget, my dear woman, you mustn't drink any more, for you have got a good husband you ought to adore, and Mr. Gillespie will help you, I'm sure because he is very kind to deserving poor. And Bridget's repentance was hearty and sincere, and by the grace of God she never drank whisky, rum, or beer, and good thoughts come into her mind of heaven above, and Matthew Mahoney dearly does her love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.